from the Sunday Vespers. So one of the longer passages that I have um, noted in the back of my Bible um, was two chapters worth, Hebrews 11 and 12. I'm not going to read all that for us, but I'm going to read portions for us. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, um, you may recognize immediately, some folks do recognize it as it's known as the, the faith chapter. It, it starts out saying, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, and, and, and so forth, and, and talks about faith in the, the opening verses. Um, and then, then begins to name um, uh, folks of the Old Testament prophets and so forth who were people of faith. And so in my Bible in the back, I have Hebrews chapter 11 dash life is not fair and then hebrews chapter 12 follow jesus when life is not fair so that's what i'd like to talk a little bit with us about this evening uh, so here here's here's some folk that are mentioned in hebrews 11 in the first part abel joseph moses the children of israel in the exodus joshua rahab gideon barak samson jephthah david samuel and the prophets all the prophets uh, they are mentioned as people of faith. Then, beginning in verse 33 of chapter 11, um, it, it tells us a little bit about some of the things that happened to some of those people of great faith. And I'm going to read verses 33 through 38. Who, through faith, conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, received promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Some, now here's where it gets kind of interesting. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and scourging, even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawed in two, they were killed with a sword, they went about in the skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, all of whom the world was not worthy, wandering over deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. Life's not fair. These were choice people. These are the prophets of God. And they went through all that thing. Life is not fair. Oftentimes it's just not fair. Why does this happen to me? Wrong question. Happens to everybody. Life's not fair. Never promised it would be. So what do we do when life's not fair? Now I want to read from chapter 12. I'm going to read verses 1 and 2, 12, 13, 14, 15, and verse 28. So it starts out chapter 2. Therefore, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Life is not fair. It wasn't even fair for Jesus. Verses 12, 13, 14, and 15. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, so that what is tame may not be put out, or lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Strive for peace with all men and for holiness, which, without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fail to obtain the grace of God, and catch this line, that no root of bitterness spring up and cause trouble, and by it many become defiled. How many people have you known who, when life has not been fair, have become bitter? The Word of God says don't do that. How do we not do that? We look to Jesus. One more verse, verse 28. Therefore, although these were therefores that I read in chapter 12, therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus, let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. Therefore, therefore, life's not fair. What do you do when life's not fair? Therefore, set your eyes on Jesus. Therefore, do not become bitter. Therefore, understand that God is awesome and he's in charge. Heavenly Father, that's easier said than done. So we pray that you would help us to do what the word tells us to do because life's not fair when we find ourselves in those unfair places. We ask that you help us to set our eyes on Jesus. It's so easy to look at ourselves 
and say, why me? Poor me. Why is this happening to me? Help us, the Lord, to set our eyes on Jesus, who for us took on the cross. And help us, Lord, not to be bitter. By your Holy Spirit, keep us sweet of spirit. Keep us, keep us joyful of heart, Lord. And help us to understand that in the end, God is awesome, sovereign, holy creator of the universe. And he looks after his children. We ask it in your holy name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you next week.